For a century, Totnes has elected a Conservative MP. Current MP Anthony Magno was projected to retain his seat with about 34% of the vote. So far, so first past the post. A Tory MP representing a constituency in which there might be a majority of people who don't necessarily share his views. And if people wanted to vote tactically, there wasn't necessarily an obvious candidate to rally around. Both Lib Dems and Labour have come second in recent elections here. South Devon, as Totnes will now be known in this election, would be just another example of a progressive tragedy that has become a trademark of our electoral system. I've come here to meet a group that think they can beat it. The South Devon primary was established to try and coordinate the progressive vote. They organised a series of events where voters could come together, hear from the progressive candidates and choose the person that they believed was best placed to beat the Tories, anointing the candidate the South Devon primary's people's champion. Now, it's not the name I'd have chosen. I'd have gone for the South Devon chosen one, or the Muad'Dib of Totnes. The Greens, Lib Dems and Labour were all invited to participate in the primary, but Labour didn't send along a representative. And the question that we asked them was, what's the, which of these candidates are best placed to defeat the Conservative at the next general election? Um, and Caroline Vaughan, the Lib Dem, won that process after they had, you know, people listened to her, they asked questions of her, and ultimately they voted in a secure voting process. Um, and 78% of them backed Caroline is the candidate best placed to defeat the Conservatives. So now, the kind of everyone in the community knows that if you want to make a tactical vote in this seat, that's the person to back. If the Labour government brings in proportional representation, we'll pack our bags and go home very willingly. I mean, this is simply a way of patching over uh, a, a, a really awful flaw in our voting system that's just not fit for purpose in a multi-party world. The uh, UK is one of only two countries in Europe that fully uses first past the post. The other one is Belarus, Putin's ally. And, um, you know, it's a, it's a system that produces divisive politics and often extreme swings. And it's not healthy. Caroline Bowden, who is the, is the people's champion, is a Lib Dem. Obviously, people join political parties for different reasons. There's a, you might be a traditional socialist and want to join Labour, you might be an eco-warrior and want to join Green. Why should those people put aside those kind of dearly held values and vote for something they might disagree with? Well, I campaigned for Labour at the last election and I work with Caroline Lucas's Climate and Nature Bill campaign, so the environment's very dear to my heart. But, uh, you know, the way I look at it is, and I think many people share this view, is that on the one side of politics you've got the Conservative Party which spans a huge range of views, or at least it used to until very recently, you know, from the likes of Dominic Grieve or and, uh, Ken Clark, Michael Heseltine, all the way to sort of extreme right-wing ideologues sort of verging, verging on fascists. And on the other side of politics, just through uh, happenstance, an accident of history, you've got, you know, three parties. And if, if they were one, our politics would be very different, but they're not, and, and they suffer a very great disadvantage um, because they are individual parties. I mean, if you look at the number of votes um, needed to elect a single MP, the cons it's something like 23,000 for Conservative, it goes up to something like 860,000 just for the one Green MP that was elected last time, and that's just deeply unfair. So what we're saying is that, you know, let's look at the fact that there's more that unites us than divides us on the progressive wing of politics and elect a politician that represents our shared values, which are quite similar on, on this wing. The primary model has been replicated across the country, including in North West Essex, where progressives hoped to unseat Kemi Badenoch. But the response from the national parties hasn't been so enthusiastic. Both Lib Dems and Labour have banned candidates from participating in future primaries. We've got really good contacts with lots of local uh, Labour members and, and, and some really uh, key people on our team are, are Labour members and I myself campaigned for the Labour at the last election so we're, we're sort of, we're embedded, all the, par all the progressive parties are embedded in the primary and it's, 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 it's a vehicle that only exists because of people from all, the par uh, uh, all the, uh, those parties. National Labour on the other hand we think they are less keen on us and um, we it certainly we believe although we've not seen it in writing but we strongly believe that they have barred all their candidates from participating in primaries anywhere in the country um, I think that's because they 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 like to have 
total control. They, they don't want to see local communities starting to take back control of their politics. But that's what we're, that's what we're doing. And, and, and we're, we've managed to step around the, uh, the, the attempt um, by Labour HQ and Lib Dem HQ to, to shut the primary movement down. And the Tory MP, Anthony Magno? I think it's a perfect embodiment of socialism. We'll take away your choice, we'll select one candidate for you and then ask you to vote for them. Nonsense. You know, this is about the community coming together to make a collective decision about which of the candidates is best placed to defeat him. I can understand why he <laughs> might have some antipathy towards our process. <laughs> um, you're taking it a bit personally, but you can, you can understand. I, I can understand that. But unfortunately, when you've got a situation where you've got an MP who's actually representing really quite a minority view in the constituency um, and, you know, 60 percent of the electorate would be much keener on having a different, more progressive type of politics. You know, that's democracy. How has South Devon fared under the 14 years of Conservative government, would you say? Well, it's a, it's a, a constituency of polarities because you've got very, very wealthy areas, a lot of second homes. Uh, you know, so people who work in hospitality or the NHS, there's no way they can afford. The rentals are crazy. House prices are crazy. So you've got, um, you've got that distortion. You've got very, very neglected areas where you know, the, the benefits freezes and the, um, the cuts to libraries and to social care have really made some communities give up, basically. I mean, if you go, there's, we've got one particular area, which I think is in the ten, top 10 poorest, most deprived areas in the country. And people think Devon's all about, oh, lovely beaches and ice cream. Obviously, we've had the water scandals, and that's, again, come from... Uh, Tory cuts to the Environment Agency, the ability to enforce and, and to have no willingness really to prosecute these companies and make them, make them pay properly. Um, and so there, it, there's a whole sort of strata of things that, that have made, um, made this area one that feels pretty neglected or complacent. Mm -hmm. So you've got a big tranche of, of, of areas which have been, it, it sort of feel they almost have a divine right for it to be conservative, I think, and that's switched off a lot of voters mm -hmm. and uh, means that people have been disaffiliated. Yeah. How are you feeling about the election? Uh, positive. <laughs> Just. <laughs> With hope. <laughs> Why positive? Um, because I'm voting for the um, Devon primary candidate and I'm hoping for change. Ideally I want to vote for Green but I know that the, the local Green representative is sort of just saying to go with um, the Lib Dem just for the tactical vote. Mm. So I think I'm going to have to vote Lib Dem. It's my first time voting mm. and it's not who I want to be voting for but I think that's probably who I will have to vote for. Would you have typically voted for a Liberal Democrat? Actually, I would have done, yeah. but I would have voted for whoever we voted mm. for on the um, Devon primary um, to uh, actively work for change, which is getting rid of the Tories. So, <laughs> yes. <laughs> but yes, I would have voted Liberal anyway on this case. So you're the kind of person that the South Devon primary is trying to appeal to. You're, you're a reluctant Lib yeah. Dem almost, but you're putting that, that loyalty aside, I suppose. Is that a satisfying thing to do, do you think? Not really, no. It's, I mean, it doesn't really seem like very democratic to just vote for them for, to get the Tories out. Would you ever vote for the Lib Dems in other circumstances, do you think? I don't think so. Um, I don't really align with them politically, to be honest. But, um, no. I mean, I've always voted Labour, mm -hmm. and in this election, if going on manifestos, I probably would vote Green. Mm -hmm. But I will vote for Lib Dems here, because oh. they've got the best chance of, of, of outing the Conservative yeah. candidate. You don't sound very satisfied with that option. I mean, no, no, I, d I don't. I mean, I, I you know, I, I'm very turned off, um, you know, in kind of national politics. Mm -hmm. I, th I think, um, you know, I'm quite left wing, and, um, and there's not really any good options. And you know, I, I guess my enthusiasm since, you know, as with lots of people my age, since kind of 2017, 2019, has turned towards trying to do more kind of grass grassroots stuff, yeah. that kind of organisation, because I think that, that's where you can make a difference. Mm -hmm. You've been anointed as the South Devon Primary's People's Champion. What have you made of that process? It was quite a challenging process to go through. We had seven hustings all around the constituency. So we did seven hustings in two weeks, myself and the Green Party candidate. And we were thoroughly grilled by the electorate on how we stood on, on lots of different issues. Um, 
I think the benefit of it was was that it gave voters the chance to meet us long before the election. So, so they met me, they could hear what I was standing for, they could get to know me as a person. So rather than just being a name, a party on a, on a ballot paper, you know, I'm, they could see me as a person. Um, so I think that really helps when people are thinking about tactical voting. And, and you know, we know that tactical voting is going to be huge in this election. And I think the primary has, has has made that more real for people. It's not just about lending their vote, it's about actually positively voting for somebody who they have got to know and who they believe in and who they can get behind. Um, and it's been an amazing process and we now have people um, working on my campaign who are paid up members of the Green Party and the Labour Party who are desperate to see another voice in South Devon, you know, who really don't want to be represented by a Conservative MP any longer. Um, and, you know, we've got a huge campaign team. It's been really exciting. It's been a bit different to a traditional Liberal Democrat campaign. Um, but it, it's been great and, you know, a really happy campaign, a really positive, And it's great to see South Devon primary boards all over the place, which say, I'm Labour but I'm voting Lib Dem or I'm Green and I'm voting Lib Dem and I think that's a really positive sign to other people from those parties that, that it's okay to do that. What would have happened do you think if the Green had won the candidate would you have campaigned as fervently as you have been or would you have pulled back a little bit do you think? It's not something that we factored into our thinking because we were determined that we would win the primary and we did and I got 78% of the vote and um, you know, it just reinforced what we'd already been doing for a year um, on our general election campaign.